Manually typing out Maui bindable properties all the time is getting kind of annoying. And really this goes for any kind of boilerplate that you need. You don't want to type it out all the time. You want it to be generated automatically in just a few keystrokes. And this is where code snippets come in. So let's create one. So first we're going to head over to Visual Studio and we're actually going to continue without code. So clicking down here and let's create a new file. So we'll go to file new and just add a file here and code snippets are represented by an XML file. So we're gonna create one of those. So the first thing we have to do in our XML file is reference the code snippets schema, as we see here. And then inside of here, we can define our custom code snippet. And let's start off by defining the metadata for our code snippet. So this goes into the header and we can define some important fields in here. The first field we'll define is the title. So this will appear in IntelliSense when we're just scrolling through our code snippets. And we're gonna give ours a title of scaffold a Maui bindable property. So just describing what the snippet will do. And then arguably the most important metadata we need to set is the shortcut. So this is what we type in order to use the code snippet. So we're gonna give ours a prop BP, kind of similar to the WPF version for dependency properties, which was prop DP. And a couple other fields we can set. So just a description with a little bit more information. Feel free to customize this as you wish. And lastly, the author so that we get a lot of clout for creating this code snippet. So now that we have our code snippet metadata, let's get into the fun part and actually define our snippet content. So we wanna specify the code that our code snippet is going to generate. The language here is gonna be C sharp and the code that we wanna generate is gonna be within these C data brackets. So right inside of here. So referencing the bindable property documentation, let's copy over the structure of the code that we wanna generate. So first we need the bindable property definition. So paste that in. Not too worried about formatting right now. We'll clean that up. And then also the bindable property accessor. So let's copy that and paste that too. But now obviously this is not what we want our code snippet to be because we're just hard coding all of these values. So the property name, the property type, etc. And preferably we'd wanna seamlessly set the variable parts of the code snippet when we use the code snippet. And this is where we meet another magical part of code snippets. We have declarations. So these basically allow us to pass in different variables to our code snippet at the time of generation. And each variable is called a literal. So let's define that. Let's give our literal an ID so that we can reference it from inside of our code snippet. We'll call this one the property name. So the consistent name of our bindable property. We can also give this a little tooltip for additional help when we're using the code snippet. So we'll just say property name for now, let's keep it simple. And we can give it a default value. We'll just say my property. And now we can reference this property name literal from inside of our code snippet. So we can remove this and wrap this in dollar signs and pass in our literal ID. So by default, this would say my property property which sounds kind of silly. Let's make this default property name instead. And let's go ahead and do the same exact thing for all of our references to the property name. So update here and update our accessor. And now, as you might've guessed, we can go ahead and create different literals for the other variable values that we wanna to pass to our bindable property. So we'll create one for the property type, which for now is bool. Another one for the owning class name, which in this case is the expander. And another one for the property default value, which in this case is null. But instead of all of these hard-coded values, let's reference our literals. So reference the property type all throughout, reference this owning class name, and finally referencing the default value. So that looks good, we have our metadata, we have our different variables, or literals I should say, that we pass in to our desired code. So now let's save our code snippet and you can really save this anywhere. I'm gonna literally save it just to my desktop. I'll call it prop BP. Kind of a good practice, I think, to name the snippet file based off the shortcut that we used. And make sure you save this as a dot snippet file. So there we go, we got prop BP dot snippet open. Now let's import this snippet into Visual Studio. So let's go to tools, the code snippets manager, import our code snippet. So we'll go to our desktop where we saved it and select our code snippet. For the location, it probably makes sense to save it in my code snippets. And boom, we should be good. So now we can test this out. Let's go create a new file, which we'll use just for testing. So it doesn't have to be associated with any project or solution. Just a C-sharp class. Let's create that. And let's try using prop BP. And boom, there we go. And we can change all of these values. 
So we'll call this like is visible, press tab, it'll be a Boolean, press tab, parent class will be class one, and default value can be false. Cool, so this looks good. One thing I am seeing that's kind of annoying is it creates an extra space at the top and the bottom, I think. And this needs to be tabbed over twice so that it looks better. And these are little things, but with code snippets, ideally you want them to be perfect so that every time you use the code snippet, you don't have to move the cursor around and update things to look good. Let's just fix it once in our code snippet and then we don't have to worry about it. So we can remove the line at the end by just deleting this line, remove the line at the beginning by backspacing to the beginning of the C data bracket. And then I think we need to tab this bindable property twice maybe. Let's try that. So saved, and that's not gonna automatically update the code snippet. We actually do have to re-import it, I believe. So let's import, select our updated code snippet, save it to the same place. We wanna overwrite it, that's important, so that we get the new changes. And now if we test this out, almost there. We need to tab this over one more time. So let's try that. Save it, re-import it, try again, and boom, there we go. And now it is much easier to scaffold bindable properties for .NET MAUI. So I might leave a download link to this bindable property snippet in the description if you want to use it in your own application. But aside from that, hopefully you can create and leverage code snippets in other ways in order to speed up your development.